So The Sympathizer is a show that I've been looking forward to being released, and it's safe to say that this first episode didn't disappoint. You can tell that A24 were involved in this production because it just looks so good. Following the captain, an undercover spy for the communist north in Vietnam based in the south and working alongside the general, over the course of a few months before the fall of Saigon in 1975, we watched him relate all of the information in the episode in a letter whilst being held in a prison in the present day. With Robert Downey Jr. delivering a fantastic performance in the brief appearances that he had as well, let's jump into this video and break down all that there was to take away from the first episode. Here is The Sympathizer Episode 1 Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. This episode started out with text appearing on screen which summed up what it felt like this show was going to be about and how the story was going to be delivered to us. This was that all wars are fought twice, the first time on the battlefield and the second time in memory. And it feels like we're going to be seeing this story developing through the memory of the main character who we know as the captain. With him being told by the guard to remember every detail this time, with the captain telling us the story of when he met with Claude at the cinema and remembering the movie that was showing incorrectly, and this time changing it to Death Wish instead of Emmanuel, it showed that memory is going to be the key focus and how he's going to be reliving everything again, and the stylistic approach that it's going to allow us to see and the errors in his memory and how things change over time when it comes to recounting it all. The captain referred to himself as a man of two faces. This is because he was a communist that was a mole in the south and assisting the general down there, being somebody who he's not to help better the cause in silence. This wasn't only apparent in his professional life and political beliefs, but it was also present amongst his friends, his background, and his stance on things. He was a man of two faces that, by the end, could almost see two sides. Hence the name, The Sympathizer, because it feels like he has that within him. This was probably most prominent in his personal life when it came to his relationship with both of his friends, Man and Bon, the two individuals that have been closest to him since they were children. They were blood brothers after all. Bon fights for the South and Man aligns his views with the North. The captain presents himself to Bon as a man in support of the South and fighting alongside it with the general. But in reality, when alongside Man, his true colors come out and his loyalty to the North becomes ever present. So it's a really complexly interesting story and approach that the show's taken in presenting the captain to us. Right now, we don't truly understand his mindset, and that's the point. We saw the two sides that the captain played when he was relaying an order which was to get a list of the secret police by his boss from the Viet Cong, but he had to go against the general in the south in order to get it. We saw this whole move play out and how he ended up in the cinema sat opposite the woman that he provided the very information to and was being hurt because of it. This was tense because she was being interrogated and asked who her contact was. And at this point in the show, we didn't know how committed she was, and it seemed like she could have given the captain's name up. But after going back even deeper in time, we saw that she was actually the very person that was trying to make sure that the captain was more convincing when she got caught. The captain was the contact, as we naturally presumed. Several months after the interrogation scene, we saw that the South had been getting hit harder with destruction, which was best represented with the cinema now being in pieces. This was something which was taking its toll on the mindset of the people there. For example, the general was looking to retreat and flee to the United States with all of his family. Soldiers had low morale and people were getting fearful because the bombs were getting a bit too close to home, being able to recognize what damage they were causing just solely based on the sound. Everybody knew that the cause that they'd been fighting for was coming to an end, and the North was soon going to be taking the South, meaning that the lives that they wanted to live would be changing. Hence why the evacuation was taking place, as if they'd stayed, they could have faced punishment or maybe even death. The bombings increasing throughout this episode was something that very much felt like it was done deliberately to make the ending feel like it was always on the horizon and more climactic. The episode started with no bombings, increased to some in the distance, they got closer, and then it was inescapable and caused death right at the end. It was a really smart way to structure the episode and its destruction, which meant that tension could be built. There was a moment in this first episode where we did genuinely see two sides to the captain in a way like no other. With him completing his task, he was speaking with Man and mentioned how he was looking forward to staying behind and seeing the North gain control, living a life openly and not needing to be a spy anymore. However, Man said to him that he was now being tasked with going to the US with the General and that he had to report back on him so that they could be aware on if he was going to try and retake the South. We saw the captain mention how the General deserved to be punished and how he didn't want to go to the States and that he didn't associate with any of their beliefs or their ways of life. 
But then Mann responded by saying that when the captain was in the United States at college, the letters that he wrote back were almost like fan letters and how he dreamed in English. So that conflict was ever present within the captain and easy to see from his best friend who had a more aggressive tone and approach. Showing why the captain may be easily swayed with his views, he's experienced both versions of life, the two faces. The episode climaxed during the evening before the fall of Saigon in the early hours of the morning. There was a scene of the general and his wife getting onto a bus where it was actually quite sad to watch. People were fleeing their country, their homeland, because there was no other option. The sign that said, all people unite to protect the South, liberate the North, were now just words as there was no more protection that could be done. They were leaving because danger was ever present. Seeing the general leaving his family photos, his belongings, saluting the statue of a soldier and leaving the country which he viewed as home hit hard, as it felt like it really captured the emotions of what it would be like to have to leave the place where you're from with none of your belongings, leaving your identity and the only life that you've ever known. Right at the end of the episode, following Don's wife and baby being killed by a bomb that was dropped, a moment which was extremely sad to witness, it cut back to the present timeline where the captain was writing the letter in his prison cell and the song Runaway by Del Shannon started playing. The very song that he corrected Claude on earlier when he thought that it was Dionne Warwick that sang it. How did the captain end up in this situation, back in Vietnam and being held in a prison cell? Considering the fact the song Runaway had a heavy feature, I'm going to presume that the captain is going to be running away from his responsibilities, and that's how he ended up being a prisoner. There are a lot of questions left at the end, but ones that you just know are going to be answered in the following episodes. It laid down a great foundation for the show to build upon, and I can't wait to see what happens next. My review of the episode. I thought this first episode was really good. I don't actually know much about the Vietnam War, the political side of it, and the mindset of the people and operations at the time. But even after watching this one episode, I've gone on to do some research to gain more of an understanding of the time, which will help when watching the show. In terms of the execution of this episode, from a stylistic standpoint, I thought it was really nice on the eye. Whether that be the real 1970s feel that it had in terms of it looking grainy and the color palette that was used, the camera movements, the clean transitions, and the inner monologue that we heard of the captain as he narrated over what we saw. The final scene in the episode where the bombs were being dropped was one which was extremely tense and gripping. It always felt like something bad was going to happen to Bon or his family, and it was devastating when it did. It's going to be interesting to see how it impacts that character moving forward, and also how it impacts the captain as two people that he cared deeply for were killed when trying to escape. Robert Downey Jr. was really good in this episode too. His character was so interesting to watch. The confidence, arrogance, tone of voice, even the way he looked, it was just captivating. Downey Jr. is entering a new stage in his career post-Marvel and I'm here for it and enjoying every moment of it. I would say that the way this episode was directed, it kind of reminded me a bit of how Guy Ritchie approached Snatch. Having the monologue, the slight informal approach in it not just feeling like we were inside the captain's head, but him actually talking to us and also the rapid transitions between scenes. I liked it. It felt Guy Ritchie inspired, just maybe a bit more polished and creative. I am really looking forward to seeing where this show's gonna go. It doesn't feel like there's anything else like it that's on TV at the moment, so for at least the next seven weeks, the story will hopefully be developing and it's gonna be getting even more creative in terms of its approach especially considering that Downey Jr. is playing multiple different characters, so it seems like it's gonna get wild. I definitely recommend giving this first episode a try because it merged the lines between horrific and humorous in a way that I've not seen before, especially about a subject which is quite so serious. Tonally, it's all over the place, but I think it wants to be. It's almost mirroring the viewpoint that the main character has, two different lives, and we're getting two different tones. So, there you have it. The Sympathizer Episode 1 Ending Explained. As always, thanks for tuning into the video and I'll see you in the next one.